And welcome everybody here in Twitch chat and everybody on YouTube who's watching this video later on for our first Throwback Thursday deck. It's going to be Mono Black Aggro. So now what Throwback Thursday means is I'm going to be building... This is from, from now. Uh, it's starting like this. I guess this is not the first Thursday in August, is it? Well, from... This is the second one. All right, so from the second Thursday <laughs> in August, um, moving forward, I'm going to be building around... Uh, rares and mythics that are rotating out that never really got to see very much play for this deck we got ruin raider and dreadshade here usually i, I pick like one that i really want to build around but uh yesterday someone was asking for like a dreadshade deck and i kind of want to build a ruin raider deck also and i was like why don't i just put them together why don't we just make a dreadshade and ruin raider deck so that's so that's the the rares that we got here so if you're watching this video later on youtube and if you have cards that you, like, you know, rare or mythic that you really want me to build um, for next Throwback Thursday, let me know in the comments what you got. I already know that I'm going to be making a Muldrotha deck for next Thursday. So that's We're definitely going to be doing that. Our other ones we got here, the Jund Reanimate is a Rowdy Crew deck. And there's a couple different ways to take that. I'll talk about more about, about that during that deck. Um, and Demir Mill is patient rebuilding there. Um... So, you know, we're going to be playing some more jank here on the Thursdays, but that's, and uh, so maybe not picking up the most wins, but that's okay. It'll be fun. Um, yeah, let me know what, what, uh, what former, or like, I guess not former, but what rares and mythics that are rotating out that in the fall they'll be gone uh, that you want to see before they leave standard. All right, let's get to our deck. So we got mono black aggro. We have 19 good looking swamps here and just a really low curve of ones, twos, and threes. We're hoping to stay, get ahead, stay ahead, um, and finish our opponent off. Uh, we're not really coming from behind too much. Like if our opponents are ahead, we're going to be kind of, we're going to be struggling there. Uh, that's kind of the same thing with our next deck too. But I do have a little bit of removal. We got cast downs, legions, ends, disfigures. You know, disfigure can, like if we attack into like a bigger creature, they block, we can disfigure it and kill it. Um, so disfigure does, uh, grow in value whenever you're playing your own creatures that you're attacking in with. But we have three creatures, Knight of the Ebon Legion, Rotting Regisaur, and Dreadshade that can just be the biggest things on the battlefield and basically be the Abyss, where our opponent has to chump block those things each and every turn. Um, you know, Dreadshade can, you know, whenever you play it, it's a, you know, it's just a 3-3, but of course you obviously have at least three lands, so whenever you attack with it the next turn, it's going to be at least... Uh, threatening to be a 6-6 because you'll be able to pump it but you know if the more lands the bigger it can get then our, our other card you know since we're going to be trying to attacking trying to be attacking a lot uh, we got ruin raiders in here if you're not very familiar with this card three mana three two at the beginning of your end step if you attacked with the creature card or sorry if you just any attacked with any creature this turn then you reveal the top card of your library put it into your hand and you lose life equal to its cmc so it gets us that card advantage um, if you're, if you're familiar with Dark Confidant and Modern, it's the Dark Confidant trigger, but it's at your end step after you attacked. Um, so it only checks at end step. So you do get to like attack, you know, with, you know, you can have like your three mana, you attack with your Knight of the Ebon Legion. They don't block it, uh, because they're scared of the pump. And then second main, you get to play a Ruin Raider, uh, put a card into your hand, uh, kind of thing. Um, as you can see, sideboard, I'm trying to keep really cheap as well. You know, drill bits are mostly going to be one we got drill bit and duress against like controlled x like that's our plan go dis discard heavy there got the other two legions ends a bunch of noxious grasps some more midnight reapers for card advantage and an extra disfigure against aggro so let's give this a try let's see how it does um let's change from vivian let's be the eternal army that seems like a pretty good profile one for today. So yeah, with these, with our janky decks today, we're going to see how far we can take it in this traditional constructed event. See how far we can get there. See if we can get up to five wins. All right, we got mono black aggro. All right, here we go. <laughs> I think Dreadhorde Va Invasion is just going to be pretty slow for the deck you know like you play it on for two mana and the next turn it's still not even attacking i think you want you want to be able to at least be attacking for that next turn all right so ravager's question was uh what are your thoughts on or any chandra tribal deck in arena 
Um, I mean, I think they're cert yeah, I think it's playable. Like, you know, the last time that we played that Chandra Tribal deck, it felt pretty good. It has its holes and everything. Um, you know, that last time we played a might specific version, struggled against um, large creatures. Oh no, do we have the, do we have the mirror? We have the mono black aggro mirror here. Oh no, we do. Mono black aggro mirror. So Bloodthirsty Aerialist is going to be a 4-5. 4-5 is really big. I, I don't want them to be able to continue to gain life. So I'm going to just kill both of these things. They get their murder back, but then I'll just retake the murder. And then I got to figure out how to kill this 4-5. Oh no. I have a cast down also. Almost got worse for me. I guess we take cast down. Make them spend the mana for murder on the freebooter. But they draw like a two mana creature here and they don't cast murder, then we'd be able to take it. Ow. Nothing flies too, which is the which is the real problem here. They're drawing all removal. I need one removal spell. I need a cast down. One cast down. That's all I need. Yeah, what is the odds of getting a mono black mirror, right? We have some big creatures too, but unfortunately theirs is in the air. We'll see if we can draw one of those cast downs. Yep, that dies there. But we'll have the big old dino. This little bit of lifelink we're getting from the vampire of the dire moon definitely helping us out. Did they draw another removal spell? That's three straight draw steps of just removal spells for them. That must be nice. So the problem with playing Rotting Registor is I have to discard Dreadshade. Um, don't think I really want to be doing that. <laughs> hey, nice. That's another removal spell for our opponent. They're 4 for 4 drawing removal. I'm 0 for 4. Or probably 0 for 5. Oh, right, that thing grows to a 5-6 now with the vampire. So now I'm, it's a two-turn clock, not a three-turn clock. 
Wow, every draw step's been removal. No, they did draw. They drew a land actually in there. <laughs> All right, so I don't have a ton of stuff for that aerial list. That aerial list is is definitely a problem. So, you know, like my main removal is disfigure legions end. And usually the bigger creatures are going to be green. So we got Noxious Grasps. The Freebooters didn't feel too good. Yeah, there was a, a patch today. So what if we take out Freebooter, put in extra Disfigure? <laughs> Oof. <laughs> Thanks for the rib cheer, Samantha. Um, let's put in, so let's put in the extra, or we'll take out Freebooters, put in the Disfigure, put in, uh, I kind of want to put in Drill Bit, but, I mean, we are on the play. I kind of want to put in Drill Bit. Let's get, like, maybe like a Midnight Reaper. Just one. And... Two drill bits or two duresses. Basically, the reason why I want drill bits is because they can take that vampire. If we get it early. Now give me a duress. All right. It really, you know, of course, there wasn't anything that looked very scary except for that one creature, but that's like the. That was like the Delver of Secrets game there. You know, you just play like your one, your one flyer and then kill all your opponent's stuff and beat them down and. With your one flyer that they don't answer. What's up, Agent? Because figures kind of help, though, like, if they don't gain life from those little lifelink things, you know, they have to be able to gain life, so if they're not gaining life, then that 2-3 is not so scary. All right, we'll see if we can keep going here. It's likely they have tons of removal spells in hand, though. I'm not convinced these Knight of the Ebon Legions are going to get there. This would be a good time for a Rune Raider. Or any of our three drops. Okay, yeah, they're just playing removal. No. <laughs> I wanted the removal last game, not this game. I don't think I should pump, because whatever I pump, they kill. Crusade. 
Well then. Oh, you gotta love magic sometimes. I bestow a mighty curse. Another Soren. That's a good one. It's a creature. Good call. I like it. I like that pump there. That's some good form. I like the tight play there. It doesn't really make much sense to attack this Orin. Take like forever to kill Soren, and they have another Soren in hand. So let's just attack them. The Graveyard Marshal can bring its own army of zombies with it. That's one of my favorite zombie tokens. That's maybe my favorite the drop the mic zombie. That's a good one. Golgari Explorer with 5 mana Vivian. But that was that was a deck that, that saw a lot of play. And like so basically my, my throwback Thursdays, I wanna I wanna play rares and mythics that didn't see play. Why we got Ruin Raider and Dreadshade in here for this one. I wanna I wanna give the rares of mythics that are rotating that didn't get to see play, I wanna give them a little bit of chance to shine. Easy like a Sunday morning. That's a very good username right there. Thank you so much for that support, Sunday morning. Our second wonderful subscriber on the day. An Axis deck? Axis of Immortality? Hmm. What do you think an Axis of Immortality deck would look like? No, Oath of Teferi never really saw play. Besides, you know, like me putting Oath of Teferi in the Infinite Bolas deck. We saw the the good part about playing 19, 19 lands here. The opponent's got six lands and some other spells that are not creatures or removal, and I only and I have just nineteen lands and creatures and removal. So those other cards that are not creatures or removal. Too many of those. Um, oh, well, thanks so much. Yeah. Um, more and more people are coming over from the YouTube channel there and saying hi and stopping by and yeah thanks for stopping by and subscribing and I appreciate that <laughs> there's the third cheers um, anything I want to change not really Admiral Beckett Brass. That's a good one. That's a good one. Yeah, Axis is the Switch Life Mythic. Ooh, could... Yeah, could pair it with Bola Citadel. Okay. Admiral Beckett Brass. Ooh, maybe next... Maybe next Thursday I just go with... 
the the three mana the three color cards because I was already planning on making a Moldrotha deck. So I could go like Moldrotha, Beckett Brass, and the what's the wall one? The Bant one, um, Arcades. So we could go with that. Um, I don't no, I don't take song requests, but you can uh, um, if you have like a song suggestion in the Discord channel. There's a room for song suggestions for me to put on the for me to add to the playlist, and then I'll you know like later on I'll take a listen. I'll, if I like it, I'll put it on the the playlist. Oh, maybe it's Moldrotha. I guess I don't really know, to be honest. Let's let's roll some bones out here. So that could be three, and then what, like Mary, maybe like Daragaz. Just pass turn here. Um, I don't know too much about spell gorger weird to be honest. Okay, so basically, I was seeing if they played the the two three. I would have had like double disfigure for that 2-3 or just kill both of their things so they don't gain life as a life link as long as it's your turn. What else we got over here? Child of Night, Gruesome Menagerie. Okay. But yeah, so there's there's a lot of rares and mythics to, to choose to kind of build around uh, when talking about those. And so that's what we're going to be doing here for the next um, the next few you know the next few Thursdays till rotation. I'll trade graveyard marshal. Not really. Oh wait, Dra Graveyard Marshal wouldn't even trade. I should attack with Graveyard Marshal too. What am I doing? Yeah, what am I doing? I sh should have attacked with Graveyard Marshal. We got that counter on Knight of the Oven Legion. That would have been imp important. Time Stream Navigator. I have never played a Time Stream Navigator deck. Is there a way just to play Time Stream Navigator kind of straight up? Like maybe not like in a combo deck? Like, maybe use Vanifar or Neoform to, like, go find it, put it into play, and, you know, like, take an extra turn with it. Yeah, I do need 10 permanents. 
Blood was my beginning, and it will be your end. House Markov grows stronger. All right, so it's a four three. Have you two kill the Soren. You and you attack over here. Screws of Menagerie is going to be kind of a problem. That's a good one. Darn. Yeah, this thing's going to be a problem. Hey, Dusted. Right, I'm going to keep that. Um... So we can Hey Matthew. All right, we'll see if we draw a cast down this time. Or what? That's unfortunate having to discard that Legion's End. That's a good one to have. Uh, this Icon of Ancestry is going to be kind of rough, though, too. I'm doing really good. Doing really good. Well, the Graveyard Marshal does have three power, which is good against these things. I don't know if I'm going to want to play it. Like, if I if I play Diagraph Ghoul, I can, like, return Gutter Bones and play Gutter Bones also. Um... Or play Dread Shade. So if I attack with Diagraph Ghoul, and let's say Child of Night blocks Ghoul, Vampire blocks here, they gain 7, they take 6, and then they have the Child still coming through to attack me. Now let's just attack like this. Darn it! <laughs> uh, I shouldn't have tapped out. We finally, we finally drew a cast down <laughs> for that thing, and I tapped out.
Yeah, that gruesome menagerie, we were looking pretty good, but that gruesome menagerie was awesome. Getting them the three creatures. And we drew our removal spells a little bit at the wrong time there. You know, we discarded one to the re the rotting register and then drew that one after that. Darn. Lost the mono black mirror. Rusa Menagerie is pretty sweet. It's a good one. All right, we'll see if we draw our third swamp. Is it another mono black mirror? Hope so. Hope we get to play these starting on turn three. Dude, nobody plays Disfigure. Stop. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Guess our opponent's playing Disfigure. Wow. Disfigure got us. Alright, come on, Swamp. I'm playing Ruin Raider if we get there. We didn't get there. No, I don't I don't have any planeswalkers in this deck. These three creatures are the top of my curve. These are my only three drops. I have nothing that costs more than that. I think this would have looked a lot different if we would have drawn if we would have had that third mana. And we're able to play the Ruin Raider on turn three. Would have had a lot more cards. I can discard this Legion's End pretty safely. Hey, how about that? Big old dinosaur. I see the opponent flooded out there. So we have Legion's Ends, Cast Downs, Sack Even Disfigure. None of those really look like cards I want. I want Duress and Drill Bit. I do want those. And then we want to play Reapers instead of Shades. We should definitely play Reapers. I, I don't think I want 14 3 drops. As we saw there, three drops can be kind of hard to cast. So I guess I should cut a couple shades. All right, here we go. That is true. Reaper does die to Cry of the Carnarium. I did, I did make the deck worse against Cry of the Carnarium. That's true. You watch Batman Forever. Jim Carrey is amazing and Val Kilmer... Val Kilmer is made of cardboard. 
Jim Carrey is a really underrated actor. He really is. People just think of him as like a as like only like a comedian kind of thing, but he's a really, really talented actor. Well, if nothing else, our deck looks pretty cool. We got vampires, pirates, and dinosaurs. We're bringing all the Ixalan tribes together. Except for Merfolk. Yeah, and of course we got the zombies. Got to add some Merfolk in here. <laughs> you got a big, nice, uh, like, gator head there in the koi pond. That's a pretty nice looking koi pond. We do have some skeletons. Oh, come on. Boo. Hmm. No land, no land, no land. Kefnet really may take over here. <laughs> oh, can we just get that just a little earlier? Ugh. Ripping land, back to back lands to get that Kefnet. That's good. Come on. Can we draw a land? Third land, please. Third land. Nope. If you wish to see, meditate. Oh, there. Okay. Yeah, that's a good tactic to make keep the large birds from eating the fish. Makes sense. Technique. I think our opponent's got this one. With Kefnet. I don't know, we'll see. Yeah, Kefnet's just so good. It is cool how Ruin Raider gets gets passed. Um, it is cool how it gets past uh, Narset. It just you know you exile and put it into your hand. And it's not drawing.
No, Hawkeye is named after the Iowa Hawkeyes, the university. It's where I was born in Iowa. He was a stray cat in Iowa on my grandmother's farm. And yeah, I've liked the, the university since I was a kid being born there and everything. I didn't go to school there, no. I moved from Iowa whenever I was in middle school, starting middle school. But still have relatives there and everything. I think my opponent mold to four, I think. Maybe five, but everything's worked out really well for them. It's tough to beat a lot of those things. Doesn't really make sense to attack with these. I'll be like sac sacrificing the Dire Graph Ghoul to deal one damage. And yeah, I hadn't really noticed the anti synergy here between the Rotting Registrar and the Ruin Raider until the last game. But is, is this um, um, anti synergy here? What's up, Guy in Shades? Thanks for that support there. Hope you're having a good Tuesday. Wow, this is Thursday. I meant to say Thursday. Hope you're having a good Thursday. <laughs> Alright, so they block Ruin Raider. They take 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. It's not lethal. But the Ruin Raider isn't doing anything special for me. <laughs> Thanks, Guy and Shades. Um... Basically, I wanted, you know, I wanted, I do want to get value from these things before Cry, before Cry of the Carnarium hits. Let's do it. Let's just attack. Good thing I attacked with all that stuff. And yeah, even though just playing that 3-2 out into the... All I was doing was playing that 3-2 out into uh, this thing. Into a sweeper. There's no reason to keep it in hand, considering we have Rotting Regisaur. That would just make us discard it anyway. <laughs> Waiting for the good boy Mobu deck. Alright, Rotting Regisaur. Get it done. Bigger than Kefnet. Confirmed. Doesn't die to Legion's End and Cry the Carnarium. GG's. Hey, what's up, Narinen? Okay, what do we got here? We got four lands. So many lands.
There's only 15 left. So we're going to be drawing spells here. We're going to draw one drop this turn. Close. <laughs> I guess I just legions end that thing. Yeah, I should legion end this thing. Yeah, got another one. Woo -hoo -hoo -hoo. Good call on the Legion's end. Pass the turn. So I'll freeboot the Reckless Rage. I'll go freeboot Gutter Bones. Hey, Crazy Core. <laughs> yeah, this arena is a lot of fun to play. It is. Um, especially if you like paper magic. You know, if you're if you're already playing paper. You know, it's I think it's I do think it's more fun to play than paper, but of course with paper you have like you know, like going to like F and M is a ton of fun, you know, hanging out with your friends and everything at, at F and M and meeting people and all that kind of stuff. You don't have that with arena. But the gameplay, you don't have to like the the thing I've never my least favorite thing with paper decks is like actually building the decks and putting them together and everything. And there's a lot of times where I'm like, uh alright, I know I have the cards and I just want to play these cards and I have them, but to like actually put them together and sleeve them and all that kind of stuff. <laughs> Save the forest by playing Magic Online. Yeah, so it's more convenient, but yeah, the the social aspects are of F and M are really nice, and tournaments and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, and you can you can do free to play and get by on your own pace. It's Magic's a very expensive hobby, and this like the only option to actually play for free is with arena like you know you can't go free to play with cards and with paper cards or magic online or anything like that yeah i actually like shuffling too shuffling's fun Like a ruin raider, getting us through these these land draws. Three, six, nine, ten. Alright. So we have like a budget budget feather here. Noxious Grasp, Legion's End, Disfigure. Do I want Freebooter? There's a lot of removal I'm bringing in. Yeah, I didn't include Spawn of Mayhem. You know, we have like these, you know, we have 12 three drops that I like. Uh, Spawn of Mayhem, you know, costs four. When you flip it over to Ruin Raider, you lose four life. And that was a little off-putting. And I wanted to keep really low swamp count.
Hey, just hanging out, watching, and everything, Crazy Core. That is good. Yeah, Dreadshade's pretty good. It, It's basically like the Abyss. It's just this huge creature that people have to jump block all the time. But it doesn't, you know, it can't... It doesn't really get through too much. Um, you know, because it does get jump blocked. It doesn't have any kind of evasion. But it is very, very large. Dread Presence, yeah, again, was like four mana... I didn't really want to just play four mana spells. You know, I wanted to play very low swamp count and low curve, and our top end's already pretty good. You know, we got 12 three drops is enough, I think. Yeah, no, I, I just produce content these days, yep. I do this. Huh. I guess that's the problem with using the disfigure. Can't kill that thing now. I'm doing this full time. All right, we'll see how the bod does. A big old dinosaur. Hey, Fairmount, doing good. No, we can't cast down Feather. Feather is legendary. All right, what is this thing? Put a 1-1 counter, gains first strike, and then you gain two life. More big old dinosaurs. Okay, okay. Of course, we'll have to, if we untap with both the dinos, we gotta discard our hands. Such is life. Um, we have lethal through this right now. Uh, our opponent needs to gain two life thing. Oh, no, it's, it's not lethal. Never mind. We have seven damage. Ooh, I don't I don't know about that attack. Do they have another blocker? A removal? What's their plan? I don't know. I'm shoving. I think it costs two mana. Boom. <laughs> no. We can't we can't cast that cast down against both those creatures are legendary. We couldn't cast down either one. Couldn't kill Tajik either. Tajik's legendary, Feather's legendary. So cast down didn't work there. Ugh. But yeah, so if they did have a creature I could cast down, yeah, I would have been able to use the cast down before, or like in response to the the discard trigger. But love it. Oh no, we're on the draw against red. No, I thought we were on the play against some deck that was not red. Red aggro has just always been, like, red aggro is just better than 
than black aggro, like in like the heads up battle, the red having all the burn spells. It is better than things that make you lose life. I was definitely hoping not to get paired against Mono Red during this. No, I'm not going to be going to TwitchCon. I'm not a... I'm not somebody who's too interested in big conventions. That's nice. Getting that land, take zero, take zero damage. That's good. Um. Hmm. Love Dreadshade. Dreadshade's good. I guess I guess Dreadshade and Rotting Register. Both those cards are very good against red though. They're very big. Let's just trade away the Ruin Raider here. And play new Ruin Raider. I don't really want to be like drawing two cards and losing a lot of life, kind of thing. No, I don't know what I don't know what JoJo is. Can't I kill that thing? Why can't I kill that thing? Yeah. Okay, it's it's a it's a show. Okay. Yeah, you can yeah, you can send me a link. Considering attacking with everything. No, just this. All right, Dredge beats Chain Whirler. Even if they had, you know, a three damage burn spell, I can make that dread shade. You know, I had five mana, I was gonna be able to make it an eight eight. Uh so like we we're gonna be pretty good there. Wow, getting game one against Mono Red. Their hand was not very good. They had like seven mountains in play. So their hand wasn't very good. And Chain Whirler. Chain Whirler's just gonna dodge all my removal, isn't it? Oh, we got cast downs. Okay. We have something. We have a little bit of a plan. Um Let's see. Kite Tail Freebooter, not so good. If we take out Freebooter, put in this other Disfigure, these other Legion's Ends. Do I want all four Legion's Ends is kind of the question. Maybe not. Oh, thanks, Fairmount. Yeah, we'll, we'll have to see. Um, uh, 
Let's see. So gutter bones, vampire, both died a chain whirler. Does that mean I'm supposed to take them out? Also fanatical firebrand, but they also just also they also just cost one mana. I'm gonna keep them. Uh, JoJo's an anime that all the hip people all the hip people watch these days. Okay. Never gotten into an anime before. Never. I don't know. I've never been an anime person. So, no. So, I was definitely so. Like, waiting on Knight of the Ebon Legion against Red isn't so bad. Like, so it doesn't die to shock kind of thing. Like where you can play it and you can have the activated ability. But that's not really our deck, especially with all these rotting Regisaurs. Like with Regisaur, you got to empty your hand. And our deck doesn't really. Doesn't really have lots of mana for that. So, I, like, just like last game, I didn't Legion's End the Lava Runner, because I want to Legion's End Steamkin. That's all I want to Legion's End. Well, now they have multiple Lava Runners, so multiple Lava Runners can get Legion's End ended. Perfect. We have the cast down. For that, let's draw land. There we go. And then we'll start playing some dinos. See if they can kill a dino. Ember hauler. Mania discard this Ruin Raider. Yep. Okay, okay. I'm gonna disfigure one of these before they can sacrifice it. So like their best thing to be doing with the Ember Hauler is like block and sack. I think that's what they're going to do with the Ember Hauler block sack. So they're at six. Man, these Rotting Registers have been awesome. We didn't do too well with the Naya Feather. Kind of had like some mana troubles and stuff, I believe. I think we did better with the Boros Feather. Or like playing the two, I felt, felt like Boros Feather uh, felt a little better. I think Naya Feather is going to be better positioned against uh, removal heavy decks. And everything. Ugh. Man, this mono black deck's pretty fun. I like this deck. This is this has been fun. Um, yeah, having some just really big creatures is awesome against mono red, and that's what we have with Dreadshade and Rotting Regisaur. But Ruin Raider has been pretty good for us. Just playing nineteen lands has been good. We haven't been flooding out. Yeah, you know, our only loss was like the mono black mirror. That was a disappointing loss, but Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood is the best story ever told. Whoa. There have been a lot of stories told. Like if you think about all the stories that have been told, there's a lot of them. 
and it's the best one. So like, so like Lord of the Rings, nope. I don't know why that was like my go-to if I was thinking of like one of the best stories ever told. I mean, it could be. Game of Thrones, not as good of a story. Uh, I mean, I don't know. I don't. I don't know anything about it. I can't say that it's not. It certainly could be. Z thinks the best story ever told is the tortoise and the hare. Go ahead and free boot. See what's going on. It's a pretty good looking vampire hand. I guess I take the Soren. They'll mortify my one two. You lost what little trust I had. If I take the mortify. Yeah, the Soren just kills me. Looking for our Legion's Ends. That'll be a nice place to start. Legion's Ending away these Adanto Vanguards would be nice. Game of Thrones is just kill everyone slowly but steady. I mean, that's basically life, right? The story of life. Ooh, killing the Ruin Raider. Wow, I am all for that. That's good for us. That means they don't get Soren back. I will happily trade Ruin Raider for Soren. Legion Zen? Gutta Bones. What else is going on over here? Nothing. Legion's in. Darn. So definitely blocking here so that yeah, like they had to pay for a life to be able to grow the Knight of the Ebon Legions. So now I only take three.
They're going down to two. Game one against We get in game one against vampires. They want to keep their night alive, they gotta activate it, and activating it means that they are not gonna have the necessary blocking ability here. Alright, game one against vampires. So that that game was really my opponent mortifying the Ruin Raider, not killing the Freebooter and getting their Soren back. Soren would have destroyed me. So extra disfigure, more legions ends. I don't really like Freebooter in these aggro matchups, but if it can take a Soren away, then we're talking. Kind of want to cut him and just play a duress, though. What do we think about playing like one duress and getting rid of the freebooters? This is question number one. Question number two. What if we get a couple more duress, another duress or two? I just want to get Soren out of there. I just want my opponent not to have Soren. Hey, Radical Guru and Mouse. Insert Nanam. Nom, nom, nom. Drill biddies. I am a little worried about, like, you know, attacking my opponent and, like, you know, turning on spectacle when we're on the draw. A little worried about that. This thing's really bad against the Legion's landing tokens, but pretty good everywhere else. Let's keep this. Hey, League Nod, League Nog, and Hannibal. Welcome to the channel, both of you. Thank you so much, Santa Mouse. To be honest, this looks better than some of the other mono aggro decks in some matches. Yeah, I think I think our deck does pretty good against like removal heavy decks, like with with having, especially post-board, with having, like, all the discard and card advantage that our three drops can provide. But, yeah, I, I thought we were going to struggle against other aggro decks, but we've been holding our own. Which has been pretty good here. Thanks so much for that support there, League Nog. You are a rock star, and, of course, Santa Mouse. You are as well. Um, It's not the worst trade for me. Radical Guru says, got my first five win in the traditional constructed event playing the Orzhov Sacrifice deck. Dang, it felt good. That is awesome. Congratulations there, Radical Guru. This really isn't a bad trade for me. Hmm. No, I'll say no blocks. Yeah, I wonder if Vampire should be playing Rotting Registrar. This card's just been awesome. Come on, more Vanguards, more Vanguards. Pay for life also. Another Vanguard. Where's that, right there? No more Vanguards. So they have a cast down for the Registrar. I guess the Vampire does match up really poorly against Zealot. Hmm. Maybe I should hold it back then. We had to manually tap for that. Oh, 
All right, 19 land deck. Stop flooding out. Had me go to discard before killing it. I was hoping they were just going to kill it. They let me attack though. They saw Ruin Raider. They should know that was a mistake letting me attack. Thank you, trigger. Don't let me attack. Oh, they just they just shame scooped. Oh, the shame scoop. The shame scoop. We are four and one with our mono black aggro. Let's get this final boss playlist out here. I'll get those final boss emotes in the chat. Here we go. Maybe Ruin Raiders is actually great. Here we go. Can we get five wins? Yep, it's standard version of Dark Confidant. We just got... We have... Like, we just have Tarmogoyf. Like, there's Tarmogoyf. We just have Tarmogoyf and Dark Confidant. Like, that's pretty good. Armagoyf and Dark Confidant. Ooh, we're playing against Jund. Oh no, Jund Dinos. Oh, that's a great draw. What a draw. Uh, let's go ahead and disfigure. Alright, I'd like our own Rotting Regisaur. That'd be nice. Hmm. So if they're if they're doing that pre-combat, I think that like the the marauding raptors are just going to I think they were going to kill like whatever dinosaur they tried to play. Yep, like I think they couldn't really actually have two of those things in play. It's unfortunate they took out my Knight of the Ebon Legion though. That's unfortunate. Yeah, so Throwback Thursday is where I am building decks built I'm building decks that are based around uh, rares and mythics that are rotating out that never got their time to shine in standard. So this this one's this deck is built around Ruin Raider and Dreadshade. Our next one it has is built around Rowdy Crew. And then our last one is um uh, whatever that blue enchantment's called. I'm already forgetting the name of it. Uh, I can't picture... What's the name of that card? P 
patient rebuilding. There we go, patient rebuilding. So that's that's what I'm doing here on Thursdays until rotation is. Um, building around cards that haven't gotten their shine. We're thinking, so uh, next week we're going to be doing like Admiral Beckett Brass, Muldratha, Arcades, all of those mythics. Um, don't really have anything to do here. It's not, this is not going to happen too often where we're the one that has a lot more lands than the opponent. That's already five lands and we put one to the bottom. So that's already six lands. There's nine, there's only 19 in the deck. So the other 48, the other 48 cards besides that bottom card, there's only 13 lands. I don't know, what's, what's 13 divided by 48? What's our percent chance to draw land? Let's find out. 13. 27. So 27% of our deck is land. That's not much. I think the only new thing with the store is like accepting new like accepting like different credit cards they didn't accept before. I think that's it. I have that other Ripjaw Raptor in next turn too. We drew zero of our, yeah, none of our, none of our three drops. Which is not ideal. Is dead. So they put a bunch of thuds in John Dinos, huh? So that costs two, and then three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Galta there. 
All right, we can't draw seven lands and zero three drops and win. We cannot do that. Let's get Legion's End, a bunch of Noxious Grasps. Um, this is definitely a drill bit matchup. Let's get those things in. Disfigure. Disfigure is probably fine. I don't really want the Freebooters. I guess they can attack, though. And even like when the ground's clogged up and trigger Ruin Raider, I guess. But nah. Let's get rid of like those and Diagraph Ghouls. All right, maybe not all these disfigures. Maybe just one. We bring in all this other removal. Got to keep our creature count pretty high. All right, here we go. <laughs> no, I don't think we need to trim two lands. We only have 19. It's not very many. Sand may not win, but we'll see. Um, Dreadshade can do, can be pretty nice. You, you know, Dreadshade can be bigger than all the dinosaurs. All right, let's see if we can. Get game two here against our final boss. With mono black aggro here. Really like a third land. Third land, please. Third land, please, third land. Please third land. Yay. So I'll save cast down for like the big scary dino. And just try to keep more pressure on them with the dread shade here. I do not want to see marauding. That was the worst case scenario, is marauding into Ripjaw. Yep, that's the worst case scenario. Darn. Just wanted to see one, one dinosaur here, not two. There's taking it all. They're gonna have like Galta or something next turn? They're probably gonna have a bunch of. So this is seven, so this is nine. Yeah. Just do this and play the knight. I was pretty surprised Marauding Raptor didn't block Knight of the Ebon Legion there. But they saw a disfigure from us, I think, maybe two disfigures last game, at least one. Smug, your, your sub didn't show up. I can fix that. <laughs> there we go, Smug with the sub. Everybody get that hype in the chat. For our new subscriber. Thank you so much there, Smug. Yeah, I don't know why I didn't show up, but... Fix that. Oh. Great card there for the opponent. 
Great card there. All right, so now they're they're on chump block duty. They're at four, so they got a chump block dread shade. I guess I would like to trade graveyard marshal for any of those. We got double jump block plus noxious grasp. I think we got this game. I'm telling you, just everything jump blocks dread shade. Even. Rotting Regisaur. It's just the Abyss. It's just the Abyss. <laughs> yeah, the 7-6 Jump Blocker. Alright, on the draw, I think we need some more of these Disfigures. Gosh, it doesn't kill... Like, not Disfigure not killing Marauding Raptor is a huge pain. Saw their Graveyard Marshal didn't look spectacular. I think I'll probably need to get rid of a Ruin Raider on the draw, though. Yeah, let's trim a Ruin Raider for a Disfigure. Maybe just that. Maybe just one Ruin Raider in, out, one Disfigure in. Alright, just that. Yeah, I, I have a mono black control deck that I made that's pretty sweet. Um, you can find the list there either on my Stream Decker page. You have to kind of look for, for it. It's like maybe a week ago or so. Um, you can also kind of search the YouTube channel to look for videos there. But yeah, if you're looking for a mono black control, I've made one of those that I like pretty, pretty good. Yeah, standard is also called Type 2. Um, I guess the Marshall, maybe the second Gutter Bones. No, because I I want to go Gutter Bones then Drill Bit Gutter Bones, right? But like, it's kind of hard for Gutter Bones to get through damage wise. I oh, will get rid of the Marshall. There's not like a popular Mono Black Control, like one that's like top tier and and like real good or anything like that. I have like my own version that I made that does pretty good. Two Savage Stomps, Ripjaw, and Rotting. So we'll take we'll take Rotting, and then we can grasp Ripjaw. But then they can, you know, they'll Savage Stomp with this Drover, I suppose. But it does cost three mana. Definitely put the right card back a little bit ago. No, not another rotting. That is a good one to have here. Oh, that's a good one to have. Um, hmm. If I attack, I play Ruin Raider and start drawing again. Start looking for an answer for Rotting Regisaur, I guess. Or I just Legion's End this Drover. Make it harder for them to cast everything and make them make them make the discard clause worse.
Don't play him. Don't play him. Just hold on to him. <laughs> Darn it. I was hoping they would just hold on to these. But makes sense. They got they got to empty their hand for Rotting Regisaur. All right, we got to draw a cast down. Come on, deck. Give us give us a cast down. You can do it. Come on, deck. Cast down. That's a cast down. That'll play. That'll play. That's a cast down. The vampire. Deck just has so many, so many big dinosaurs. They have some really powerful cards they could draw that take this game over. Come on, draw some lands. Draw a land or two. Okay, we're doing it. Kind of. We're kind of doing it. Yeah, Throwback Thursday is about building around cards that are, like, underplayed rares and mythics they're going to be rotating out. Well, I mean, I got to cast this before we discard it, unless I attack and then we draw something else. Yeah, so we could cast it on upkeep. Yep. So in case of Galta. Shifting Ceratops. That thing does nothing. Do, do, 
do do. So we have four, four toughness total. I mean, attacking here, killing the Marauding Raptors does turn on Shifting Ceratops. But that's fine. Because, you know, the Shifting Ceratops comes in and it's a 5-2 and then I can disfigure it. Boom. That is match. That is match. We defeated Jund Dinos there. We had some good wins. Vampires, Jund Dinos, Mono Red. Our deck was pretty sweet. Not gonna lie, I think that's that's probably gonna be the the best deck today. In fact, I'll yeah, that this is gonna be the best deck of the day. I thought that I thought all of our decks were gonna be really janky. This one not so much. This one was actually sweet. So yeah, really cool little deck here. Ruin Raider was really good. Dreadshade was really good. Rotting Registor was incredible. But yeah, all all, all of these three drops were awesome. Knight of the Ebon Legion, of course, is really good. Vampire of the Dire Moon. Man, that one came in clutch a couple of times, including that last game. But then, yeah, you just get a bunch of Legion's Ends. Disfigure was a pretty good removal spell. Cast Down was awesome. It definitely felt like we needed a fourth Cast Down. Cast Down was, like, the card that we needed all the time. Um, yeah, it kind of felt like we needed a fourth Cast Down. Like, instead of this third Disfigure in the, in the sideboard, getting a fourth Cast Down in the sideboard instead... Cast Down was just really incredible. Play this deck again before rotation? Okay. Um, yeah, this one was really good. Maybe not... Like, Dire Graph Cool didn't do a ton for us, but, you know, we want to keep a low curve and everything. Maybe maybe the fourth Vampire of Dire Moon instead of the Dire Graph Cool. I was thinking, like, against, like, some non-creature decks, you want, like, the two power instead of the one power, right? That kind of split them with the three and three there. But... There we go. Hey, thanks so much, Chronic Slayer. Thanks for getting some subs out. So welcome to the channel, Vlarkin, Optimi Optimistic Otter, and Knobs. Welcome to the channel, y'all. But yeah, this was this was a really sweet one. So throwback Thursday, starting with a success. Looks like Ruin Raider and Dreadshade. These two cards. Got to see the the light of day there. Got to shine. So that's what the Throwback Thursday is all about. If you're watching this video later on YouTube, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe buttons over there. And let me know what cards you want me to build around. Uh, what rares and mythics that are rotating out that are about to leave standard. Which ones do you want to see played in standard? Um, let me know there in the comments. Or if you see if you're looking at the comments and you see one that somebody else recommended that you really like. Um, you know, give it a thumbs up and everything there. All right, that's um, that's it here for, for Mono Black Aggro, though. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you for the next video.